assalamu alaikum doctors today i am going to teach you protein energy malnutrition and the context of pediatrics so before moving towards the topic we have to understand the term that is called is malnutrition when i say malnutrition it means that is a defective nutrition malnutrition means defective or abnormal nutrition so it doesn't mean that it is a deficiency of nutrition when i say malnutrition so by by malnutrition i mean to say undernutrition and overnutrition so malnutrition comprise of undernutrition and overnutrition malnutrition comprises undernutrition and overnutrition so most of the developing countries and underdeveloped countries they are likely suffering from the undernutrition like protein energy malnutrition that's the reason it is also called as protein energy undernutrition while in another hands most of the developed countries they are suffering from overnutrition problems like in the like obesity etc so the developing and underdeveloped countries they are likely suffering from undernutrition while the developed countries they are primarily suffering from the overnutrition like obesity now and develop and developing countries there may have a problem that they have a proper amount of food but they lack the sufficient amount of nutrients and that is called as a hidden hunger so what is hidden hunger hidden hunger means that and mostly in developing countries many people may take a foods in a sufficient amount but they lack the proper amount of nutrients and that so that is called as hidden hunger people may take people may take good amount of and take of foods but lack sufficient nutrients so what is hidden hunger and hidden and hidden hungers people may take good amount of intake of food but they lack the sufficient nutrients it is important now secondly protein stored in the body in two forms and that is somatic protein component and visceral protein component so let me write it protein stored in the body in two compartments the one is called as somatic protein component and the another is called as visceral protein component so what does somatic protein component means it means the protein stored in the form of like and somatic protein component protein stored in the protein stored mainly in skeletal muscles while in another hands and visceral protein component protein stored in mainly body organs here protein stored in body organs so the somatic and somatic protein component protein stored in skeletal muscles while in visceral protein component protein stored in body organs so and the somatic so somatic protein component lost in marasmus while the visceral protein component it is lost in the kwashiorkor i will be discussing these diseases one by one but till now just keep in mind there so many protein components here protein stored in skeletal muscles while in visceral protein components protein stored in body organs now let's talk about the major classification of protein energy malnutrition so protein energy malnutrition it is broadly categorized into three spectrum of diseases the first is called as kwashiorkor second is called as marasmus and the third is the combination of first two diseases that is marasmus kwashiorkor so protein energy malnutrition it is broadly categorized into three diseases the first is called as a kwashiorkor second is called as marasmus while the third is called as marasmic kwashiorkor now it is very important that kwashiorkor it is more common in 1 to 5 year of 1 to 5 year child and 1 to 5 year child it is more prone to the disease of kwashiorkor while in another hands the marasmus it is more common in infants lies like less than 1 year of child is more likely suffering from the marasmus so the age is important and kwashiorkor 
the age is one to five year, while in marismas it is less than one year. If I say strictly uh, speaking regarding Koshyokar age, so it is more uh, likely occur in the child beyond the 18 month of age. So more uh, often beyond 18 month of age. So protein energy malnutrition probably categorized into three diseases that is Koshyorkar, Marismas and Marismas Koshyorkar and Koshyorkar it is common in one to five year of child and what is actually what happens in the Koshyorkar and Koshyorkar there is protein malnutrition but the caloric intake is sufficient so in Koshyorkar there is protein deficiency while the caloric intake is sufficient while in another hands the Marismas is more common in less than one year of child and it is in Marismas there is protein deficiency and caloric intake is deficiency so the, the both deficiency occur in the marismic condition well if you see the third spectrum of diseases that is called is marismic Koshyorkar so it is a sort of overlapping of these first two spectrum diseases like there would be like a picture of both features of Koshyorkar and marismas so some features uh, will be likely more resemble to, towards the Koshyorkar and some cases it will be like more resemblance of marismic or it would be the combination of features of these first two now first let's understand the first disease that is called as Koshyorkar after that we will be discussing marismas in detail now what is basically Koshyorkar as I told you earlier it is the protein deficiency what is Koshyorkar yes it is protein deficiency it is protein malnutrition or it is protein deficiency while caloric intake while caloric intake is sufficient and what is the age for the Koshyorkar that is mostly one to five year child now what is the most diagnostic feature for the Koshyorkar patient so the most defining sign for the Koshyorkar that is called as a pitting edema that is called as pitting edema pitting edema is the most most important and diagnostic feature for Koshyorkar and it is considered as one of the defining signs for the Koshyorkar and pitting edema the ankles and feet they get swollen and when we about uh, when we apply force and shin there will be pit formation and that area so in pitting edema there is swollen ankles swollen ankles and feet now the most important point is the pitting edema when it comes initially the pitting edema it is more pronounced in lower extremity then it shifts toward the upper extremity and ultimately it involves the whole body so this is important what is the pattern for the pitting edema <coughs> first it is most first it is most pronounced and lower extremities after that it shift toward the upper extremities and ultimately it involves the whole body now is pitting edema is the diagnostic feature and it is the defining sign for the Koshyorkar that's the reason in some condition in some cases the Koshyorkar it is also called as edematous malnutrition it is also called as edematous malnutrition now there is a question why edema occur in Koshyokar uh, and later we will be discussing that pitting edema is completely absent in case of marismas but in case of Koshyokar the edema is the important feature for it so the question is why edema occur in the Koshyokar so that is because of decreased level of albumin because of decreased level of albumin like the albumin value become less than 2 gram per dl so when albumin get decreases so ultimately what what happens that uncoated pressure get decreases uncoated pressure get decreases and uncoated pressure it is responsible <coughs> uncoated pressure it is responsible for clearing the for clearing the interstitial space back to capillaries so so that is because of decreased albumin value so albumin because of decrease albumin and when albumin get decreases so what happens that uncoated pressure get decreases and uncoated pressure 
is responsible for clearing the interstitial spaces back to capillaries. So here the oncotic pressure gate decreases and ultimately there is retention of fluid. There is retention of fluid and interstitial space which often lead to the edema. So this is very important question. Why edema occur in the kwashiorkor? That is because of decreased albumin value when al and that is like uh, less than 2 gram per dl. So when albumin get decreases, the oncotic pressure get decreases, ultimately there will be retention of fluid and interstitial stress which could lead to the edema. So, so pitting edema is the most important and diagnostic feature in case of kwashiorkor. Now what is the second most important presentation of a patient when, she, uh, when one is suffering from kwashiorkor? That is abdominal distension. So the second most important feature is, that is called as abdominal distension. Abdominal distension, or it is also called as protuberant bile or uh, pods bile. Now, the, what is what are the major reasons for the abdominal distension? So there are two major reasons for abdominal distension. The first is that is osmotic imbalance. The first is osmotic imbalance and retention of fluid. Retention of fluid and intestines. And the another reason is that is called as hepatomegaly. So the abdominal distension, protuberant belly or port belly, it is occur because of two major reasons. The first is that is osmotic imbalance and retention of fluid and intestines, and the second is hepatomegaly. So till now we discussed pitting edema and abdominal distension. The third feature is let me raise it. The third feature of Kwashiorkor is that is enlarged liver. So there will be enlarged liver. That is, a third is, there is enlarged liver with fatty infiltrate. With fatty infiltrate. Now, the other feature is, there is also skin inflammation is more pronounced in condition of kwashiorkor like flaky dermatitis. So it is important that flaky dermatitis are dermatosis. It occur in the condition of kwashiorkor. All skin inflammation is more pronounced in the condition of kwashiorkor. And also there is irritability and anorexia. Means book na lagna. So there is irritability and anorexia, and there are certain hair changes may be observed in the condition of kwashiorkor. There are certain hair changes, hair color changes observed in the kwashiorkor, and that is a specific sign, and that specific sign is called as flag sign. So what is flag sign? Flag sign is is actually it is a hyperpigmented and hypopigmented bands that is occur in the Hairs. So actually it is an alternate light and dark bands. Let's say if this is a hair, so there will be light color of hair after that there is dark hair. So like there will be a pattern of alternate light and dark bands of the, and that is like occur in the hairs and that condition is called as flex, flex sign. Now it occur in the kwashiorkor. So I repeat what is flex sign? It is the alternate light and dark bands in the hairs. Now there are, there are a lot of other features as well like there will be a moon like face in the patients. So the facial appearance of the kwashiorkor is there is moon like face and there is somehow growth retardation can be absorbed in condition of kwashiorkor. There is growth retardation, apathy, and also if you see the serum albumin uh, value, it will be uh, lie in the range of 0 0.5 to 2 gram per year. That is a serum albumin value in case of kwashiorkor. 
So till now we discussed the first worker. What is, what are the clinical presentation? What are the uh, what are the signs and symptoms of a patient? I repeat the first the most important defining sign is fetal edema. After that we also discussed that there is abdominal distension. There is enlarged uh, enlarged liver with fatty infiltrate. Also there is flaky dermatitis. There is uh, dermatosis as well, and there is irritability and anorexia. There is uh, the most important uh, sign that is observed in the condition of first worker that is called as flex, and also there is moon. Like face, growth retardation, apathy. So these are all are the important manifestations for the Hirsch Yorker. So now let's discuss what are the treatment plans for the Hirsch Yorker. So let's talk about the management of Hirsch Yorker. So in the management, there is breastfeeding. Now, the management of Hirsch Yorker it is classified into two sides, like for the mild to moderate Hirsch Yorker and severe Hirsch Yorker. So in mild to moderate, there is two conditions. If the child age is less than six months, so there is different approach to treat the child. And if it is more than six months, we have to treat it differently. Now, if a child has an age of less than six months and, and having a mild to moderate Hirsch Yorker, so what we will be doing? So at first day, there are different days. So at first day, and there is second, a uh, third day, and that is a fourth day. So. If the baby age is less than six months, so there is, we will be doing the best treatment option is breastfeeding is increased to the child. Also, we have to give the formula feeding. If the baby age is less than six months and it is a mild to moderate for sure, so uh, there is treatment option is breastfeeding and formula feeding. So how much uh, content? Uh, how much the content of amount is given. So there are different days for it like at first day, second and third day and at fourth day. So at first day the formula feeding is a given as 150 ml per kg per day. According to body weight, that is according to body weight and half strength milk, half strength milk is divided into 12 feedings. Half strength means that the equal amount of uh, water is mixed into the milk. Is uh, we decrease the strength because uh, the formula feeding is not as such uh, digestible in the child, so that's the reason. So at first we will give the formula feeding in a 150 ml per kg per day according to body weight of the child, and having a half strength milk is divided into 12 feeding. At second and third day, the formula feeding is given as 150 ml per kg per day according to body weight and half strength milk and half strength milk is divided into eight feeding while on fourth day that is 100 ml per kg per day and full strength milk is divided into six feeding now, if a child has an age more than six months and having mild to moderate Hirsch Yorker, so at that condition, we will give high protein to the child. We will give high protein to child, like up to four to six gram per kg per day. Like normally, it ranges from uh, 0.2 or 0.2 to two, but in this condition, we will uh, exceed the protein amount up to 4 to 6 g gram per kg per day. While on another hand, if there is severe Hirsch Yorker, so in that condition, is it is an emergency, so we will be uh, admit the child in that condition. So there will be hospital admission, and we will give dietary protein to the child. We will give the dietary protein to the child. If the child refuses to this dietary protein, so what we will have, what we will do, we will give the protein and parental route. So first, there is ad hospital admission to the child, and we will give dietary proteins if if baby refused to dietary protein. So then we will give proteins through. Parental route. 
So students, this is the management option for the quash worker. We categorize it into two uh, categories, like for the mild to moderate, we have a different treatment plans, and for the severe quash worker, we have a different treatment plans. So hopefully uh, you get this lecture till now. If you have any query, you can comment as well. Thank you so much.